Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100-pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. Most of us have heard the saying, pride goeth before the fall, or pride cometh before the fall, or pride goes before the fall. Whatever it is, most of us know what this implies, that if you're too proud, if you're too pumped up, too full of yourself, you're getting ready to fall. But that isn't exactly what the old proverb says, because it's found in Proverbs 16, 18. And one of the versions says, to humans belongs the plans of the heart, but the Lord comes before the proper answer. Okay, so what this means is when you get ready to be a little proud of something you've done or where you've been or how you look, or it's in verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 18, that we find the real truth of the words where it says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. So the first sign of pride is when things are starting to destruct in your life. When there's any kind of destruction, if friendships are falling, if marriage or business or partnerships or whatever it is in your life that seems to be falling apart, that may just mean that there has been a little pride or the haughty spirit that comes before that. You see, there are four main areas where we find pride. One of those is in the harsh spirit. If you've never known anybody who is kind of harsh in the way they speak, they look down upon you or they think better than thou seems to be what they're saying. That's one of the things we think about, but also people who are fault finding. Have you ever known anyone may have been one of your parents when you were growing up or maybe a spouse or a friend, or maybe you are the one that seems to be always finding fault with everybody else. Well, one of the Pharisees said, thank God I'm not like one of them. But in truth and reality, that Pharisee was worse off than the one they were criticizing. You often hear of bullying. And of course, this has become the big rage in schools, but it's always been. Everybody has known bullying since the time they were small. I used to be called fat so and chubby and lard bucket and any kind of name because I was such an overweight child and then an overweight teenager. So until I had lost a hundred pounds, I didn't know what it was really really like to be one of those who looked at others and I would see, well, why can't they lose weight? I did. I always ended up with God forgive me because I know it wasn't easy and I now have empathy and compassion on those who are trying to lose weight. So that's number two, the fault finding. The third one is a superficial heart. Have you ever known that when pride is the ruler of your life, your perceptions become a little bit superficious? Well, this is what I was. It was the 19, I believe, 89 State Teacher of the Year Banquet, and I was getting ready to read my speech on why I was the Lindbergh High School Teacher of the Year, and now I was one of the top five chosen at the State Teacher of the Year, and I had my speech all planned out, and sitting next to me was my husband and all of my family and all of the the superintendents and the school officials. And I was pretty proud to be the teacher of the year, but I wasn't giving credit where credit is due. And my mother, who was always able to see through me a little bit more than others, handed me a little present. And it was a little box, and I unwrapped it, and I opened it up, and I had to hurry because I was getting ready to give my speech on why I was teacher of the year. And I looked inside, and there wasn't anything in there. And I pulled out a piece of cotton, and underneath it was a letter that was written 
when I was 16 and my father had left it on my pillow the night that I had run away from home. I was gone six weeks and my mother retrieved that letter and never gave it to me. So 20 some years later, I am now sitting here reading this letter that reminded me of where I had been and what I had done. Part of it said, my darling baby girl, I write this as your daddy and as mommy and I love you and pray for you more than you'll ever know. We don't know where we went wrong or what we could have done to make your teenage years better. But I write this in hopes that when you come home tonight, no matter how late it is, you'll come and please talk to us. We know that really you're a grown woman by now and there's nothing we can do to keep you from running away. But please, Debbie girl, let's try to work it out one more time. I would give my very life for the chance to make it right again to have it back where you were sitting on daddy's lap and bringing all of your hurts and wounds to me to make better. All I can say is, I know we can work this out. Please come talk to us. Always, your loving daddy. He always started my letters or talking to me with my baby girl. Even when he was 93 and didn't have much longer to live, I would see him and he would always say, here comes my baby girl. Well, that night I was reading this letter for the first time, and tears were streaming down my cheeks, and mascara was along with it, and I looked like the wicked witch of the West, and I looked over at my mother who had given me this, and I said, how could you give this to me at a time such as this? I'm just about ready to... And she patted my hand across the table, and she said, I knew there would be the right time. Yes, mothers see through us. She saw that what had been total, I guess, dependence upon myself in thinking I had done such a great job to overcome all of the ills in my life. No, it had been all of the people that poured into me, including her, including daddy, my husband, my family, my friends, my colleagues, my fellow teachers. And now I knew pride indeed came before destruction and I was a mess and I was getting ready to fall. So instead of giving my speech about how I had become such a wonderful teacher and helped to start the alternative school at Lindbergh High School for troubled teens and how I had, and the I, I, I was right there in the middle, just like P-R-I-D-E, pride which cometh before the fall. And instead of going to true destruction and the fall, I instead read Daddy's letter as my acceptance speech that night at the State Teacher of the Year banquet. And I have read that letter at every speech I have ever given. I have read it in all of the opportunities I have had to share with others, including troubled teenagers, and I never want to forget what it was like to be a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, a hundred pounds overweight, hated by so many, hating myself, and just wanting to end it all. But instead, God picked me up and gave me another chance. And I've had so many, including my own family and friends and husband and everyone else who have given me another chance. And I thank God that now I see P-R-I-D-E must be P-R and that I becomes the cross where he paid the price. That's what has to be in the middle of it all. So that was the third dangerous symptom of pride. And the last one is being defensive, being one who will stand in the middle of self-righteousness or one who is defending actions when we indeed know it was nothing but the grace of God. Today, when I was teaching in the prison to my women there, we stood in a big circle and held hands and sang Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me. I had once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. My friend, never forget 
no matter how blind you are, no matter how defensive, superficial, harsh, fault-finding, or how much you see that in others, just recognize that we're just one lost soul, one beggar begging for bread, and there is only one, Christ, who is the bread of life. Father God, thank you that we can come together knowing that we all have faults and you've given us all gifts and talents to be used for you. We must always remember that you're the one who gave and you're the one who must receive the glory. And I thank you for my friends, maybe even strangers listening right now that just needed to be reminded, you give and you give and you give always enough that you will get the glory. Thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, stay tuned right after this. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.